have a confession. I've been itching for a Dermlite DL5 Dermascope for a couple of years now. And here it is. To my faithful and trusted DL3, it feels like I've committed adultery. Is the grass really greener on the other side as the most expensive dermoscope on the market? Will it take my dermoscopy to the next level? Or have I been made a fool of giving in to the flirtatious advantages of the DL5? I've taken the hit to my bank account to find out so you don't have to. I'll be exploring what's in the box, how to operate it, its extensive features, comparing it to my faithful DL3 with videos on my patients and assessing it using my five point rating scale for general practice, which is explained in more detail in this video here. Let's get started. What's in the box? The box is large enough to contain a bottle of homemade red wine. There's a credit card like holder to greet you. I was hoping for a voucher for a bottle of champagne, discount card, or even a thank you for buying this ultra expensive dermoscope, but no, you get a QR code to take you to a brief online manual in 32 languages, how it's connected together, and a summary on how to use the dermoscope. There's a five year dermoscopic and one year battery warranty. There's the DL5 itself. Lifting the inner divider, you find a charging station. There's one USB C to USB C cable plug isn't included so make sure you have one. In the manual it mentions a USB-A power slot on the front of the charging station but mine didn't have one. Reading comments online it seems that some people thought the USB-A slot was to power the charging station itself and it caused confusion. There's five ice caps to cover the faceplate when extended. A microfiber cloth, does anyone use those? Plastic belt holder, a leather belt case. The advertised magnetic eyepiece that isn't magnetic because it's now a rubber seal rather than the advertised magnetic attachment. I emailed Ermite and they confirmed the change was to make it more secure. Some people have found the magnetic attachment was easier to knock off. I don't use it because I'd need to take it off each time I put the dermoscope in the leather case and I'd be sure to lose it in my GP bag. There's a magnetic connect clamp adapter for smartphones or tablets. How to operate it? There are four buttons. On the left hand side of the handle there's only one button. Push it briefly to switch the dermoscope on. It starts in full cross polarised light mode. Another short press switches it to non-polarised light. If pressed longer than one second, it switches the dermoscope off. If you don't understand the basics of how dermoscopy works and polarised versus non-polarised light, watch this video here. This button also rotates with a slight clicking sensation forward and backwards. And when in full cross polarization mode, rotating the button moves you through the non-polarised light and into what's called linear or parallel polarised light. We'll explore what that means later on in the exploring features section. A button in the centre of the handle switches on and off a simple LED light that acts as a torch. Rotation of the dial button varies the level of brightness. This is for general skin illumination only and pressing it switches off the dermoscope's main light which can't be used at the same time. The lower button on the right side of the handle is for pigment boost. For orange or amber if you prefer, LED lighting up adding a warmer tone to your image. A smaller white LED lights up near that button to let you know it's on. If you press and hold the pigment boost button for more than a second, all the four amber lights light up. Perhaps it could give me a suntan. The upper button, when the dermoscope is on, it activates the four UV LEDs. The dial button varies the intensity of the UV LED. The small white LED comes on nearby to let you know the light is on. I'm right-handed, so my thumb activates the left hand on off and rotating button. For a left-handed person, it would be your index finger. The handle is solid and is of a rounded profile, but comfortable to hold. The DL5 is noticeably larger and heavier than my DL3, and I understand a few people have returned it for this reason. If you have small hands, be aware of this. The handle size is seven inches long. Size isn't everything, also I've been told. There's a 10 millimeter steel ruler attached to the front of the handle. I was initially frustrated trying to figure out how to remove it without breaking my painted nails. The secret is to press the middle as it flexes down into a small depression in the handle and that enables its easy removal. Note to self, always read the manual first. It has millimetre gradients on one side with no numbers and on the other semicircles up the steel is thin so if you bend it out of shape I can imagine it would not sit well back on its magnetic base in the handle. You can buy a replacement but it will cost the equivalent of around 50 of my plastic rulers. For charging the DL5 you have two options, a cradle and a USB-C cable. It's good to have both options and my DL3 only has a cradle. The dermoscope has four white LEDs that pulse when the battery is charging. Four lights 100% Three lights, 75%, two lights means 50%, and one light means 25%. When fully charged, the four LEDs stop pulsing. The faceplate extends by rotating the head. A line labeled zero is the optimum distance for those with normal eyesight and when attaching a camera to get the best focal distance from the skin. Applying the ice caps is simple enough. 
Used for examining mucous membranes or wet oozing lesions, the cost to replace them needs consideration. Including delivery, in the UK it comes at around £1 sterling for each, in packs of 25. Would you clean and reuse them? The faceplate is glass. If you crack it, you can buy a replacement. You remove it by rotating it 90 degrees for cleaning out any internal wayward dust. It can be a bit fiddly, but it's easy enough to attach if you do it gently. It sits securely and I don't think it will fall off. Remember, the faceplate simply allows you to adjust your distance from the skin while maintaining contact with the skin lesion because you need a clear physical barrier for contact dermoscopy. It's not a lens. Focusing a dermoscope is only achieved by moving nearer or further away from the skin. There's a millimetre scale on the faceplate enabling you to measure skin lesions. You cannot use the dermoscope when it's charging, but if you run out of juice, a few minutes charge should be enough to get you going again. If no button is pressed for three minutes, there's an auto switch off function, which I tested and was three minutes exactly. Battery. Dermlite recommends you only buy one from Dermlite, which comes with a tool to help you. This tool is a small screwdriver. A Chinese battery comes at a cheaper price if you want to risk it for the sake of a few dollars. To replace the battery, this is what you do. Pull off the dial by grabbing it at the fingernail notch. Unscrew the cover screw. And slide the battery cover off the device. Disconnect the small white battery plug and remove the battery and insert a new battery reconnecting the battery plug. Reattach the battery cover. Secure it with the cover screw. And push the dial in until it snaps into place. Simples. Exploring its features. The X is for polarised light, the brackets for non-polarised. What does this parallel line mean? Rotating the off button when using the dermoscope gradually sifts the light from fully polarised to non-polarised, then through to what's called linear polarised light. What this does is it changes your dermoscopic view from a fully polarised one, ideal for deeper structures, up through the skin layers to the surface via non-polarised, all the way to the top surface in nine increments. The blurb says, Linear polarised lens accentuates the superficial skin markings by filtering out all light except what is directly reflected off the skin surface. Thus it shows surface features better, such as milia-like cysts, crust and scale. I'll demonstrate what this looks like in practice when I compare my DL5 to the DL3 on a series of my patients. The battery is rated at 3000 milliamp hours, lasting twice as long as the DL4s. It has been rumoured that it will power your Tesla car for 100 miles, but I've been unable to confirm that fact. The lens is a whopping 32mm in size. This is much larger than the 25mm on my DL3, so it's ideal for larger lesions. The downside is it's more awkward to reach difficult skin areas, such as around the eyes and upper nose. A couple of times examining a lesion on the nose, I reached for my DL3 because the DL5 couldn't reach adequately. I've opted to purchase the optional small face plate for such occasions. The alternative is just to use lots of contact medium as a bridge. The other way to compare the DL5 and DL3 is on my patient. Here's six patients of mine comparing the DL3 and the DL5 images. I'll keep quiet so you can concentrate, but can you make a diagnosis on each?
The needs of primary care dermoscopy are different from those in general practice. We are masters of the benign normal skin lesions. Secondary care are masters of the pathological. My rated scale looks at five factors I consider vital for a dermoscope in primary care. Is it a hybrid or not? It certainly is. Not all dermoscopes have the same ability to show polarizing structures, but I think the DL5 had a slight edge over my DL3. Its ability to scroll from polarized to non-polarized light and then through to the more superficial view of linear polarization, whether or not that will help me to diagnose skin lesions better, I think it's open to debate. Certainly you get a different feel for a skin lesion and with time this may pay dividends. For me it's too early to say if it's a gimmick or a game changer but I'm open to persuasion. Round one to the DL5. The naked eye test is to see how easy it is to use without a camera attached and just the naked eye. The 32 millimeter eyepiece and crystal clear view I found easier to use than my DL3 but not in a way that I think will affect my diagnostic abilities. Lesions in awkward to reach locations will be more of a problem however. I think the small contact plate should have been included in the package and not just as an accessory. Round two to the DL5 by a fine margin. Is it camera compatible? There's no difference between the DL3 and DL5 in the options with a magnetic ring. I personally don't like the MMC clamp and I use an alternative phone holder which I find quicker. Speed matters in general practice. You'll need to find out what works best for you. For me, it's a tie. Is it baggable? If you can handle the size and weight of the DL5, I doubt you're going to notice the difference when it's in your bag. As an expensive piece of equipment, you'll be wanting to protect it carefully. Keeping it permanently on my work desk where it can go walk about isn't going to happen. I keep the cradle at home to charge it once a week, which is more than sufficient. The backup of a cable charging option is reassuring. I felt the leather case is too small and inadequate for protecting the expensive headpiece and is a step down from that afforded by my DL3 leather case. Why doesn't the case of the DL5 cover the whole headpiece? Surely cost saving is minimal. For me, this round belongs to the DL3. Is it a looker? I must say I'm impressed. You get a beautiful clear image and its larger lens size and variable light settings give a much more immersive appreciation of different skin structures. Being able to add in ultraviolet light and pigment boost gives nice variation to the image. I'm waiting for some scabies to try and ultraviolet light the mites but that's for another day. However, until studies show a clear and simple way for these extra lights to help us manage our patients better, they aren't essential for general practice deboscopy. Indeed, perhaps they could be distracting and lead to confusion. Summary. Pros. For the price you'd expect top quality lenses and the best image quality. It certainly delivers. The 32mm lens gives you a lovely wide field of vision perfect for larger skin lesions. Variable polarization, pigment boost and ultraviolet light are well executed and provide state-of-the-art viewing of any skin lesion. Its exceptional battery life is unlikely to let any but the most foolhardy down. Having two charging options is appreciated and the little touches such as the ruler and illuminating torch add to the feeling of this being a feature-packed quality instrument made to last. A replaceable battery gives it added longevity. Cons. It comes at a premium price. Can you afford it? It's larger and heavier than any other dermoscope and if you have small hands and a weak grip, perhaps try one first to see if you could enjoy its long term. I think the leather case is weak to protect your investment, certainly for a busy GP bag filled with other essential items. The trade-off for the wide 32mm lens is the reducibility to access awkward places and without the optional small contact plate you will struggle at times. Is the DL5 a game changer or a gimmick? Think of it like this. Are you looking for a Ferrari or a basic runabout? Are you a Jimmy Shoes or a basic sneaker kind of person? If you're learning to drive, do you really want to learn in a Ferrari? All those buttons, dials and options can easily confuse and prevent you from learning the basics. Mirror, signal, manoeuvre. Can you handle walking in a pair of Jimmy Choo shoes or wouldn't you be more comfortable and more safer in a pair of sneakers day in day out? If you're new to primary care dermoscopy and considering your first dermoscope, you don't need ultraviolet light, pigment boost and variable polarization to excel. Although perhaps you might like the idea of when someone asks you, what dermoscope do you use? You reply, oh, I've got a DL5. What do you use? On the other hand, perhaps like me, you've been using a dermoscope for some years now and the basics of lesion recognition are old hat and automatic. You fancy a new challenge and splashing out on an extra <coughs> dollars isn't a concern, then you will find the feature-packed DL5 right up your street. In using dermoscopy for diagnosis, it's not so much the hardware that makes the difference, it's the one driving it and their experience that matters most. Is it a game changer? The choice is yours. Still confused? Then watch this video here which will take you through finding the right dermoscope for you. Training a primary care dermoscopist for every general practice.